I'm gonna tell you why a Toyota Tundra can be one of the best used trucks to buy, especially the early ones. Now this is a 2000, the first one sold in the United States or 99. It was made in Indiana. And realize that people say, oh, it's a Japanese truck. 75% of the parts in Tundras come from North America. So they're really an American truck. Now granted, these trucks are always expensive, relatively speaking, even used. This one was bought 160,000 miles on it and he had to pay 14 grand. Now a lot of people would say, boy, he was an idiot. He paid $14,000 for a truck with all that mileage. Well, eight years later, it now has twice that mileage if we get some of the dirt out of the way. 322,575 miles. And how does it run? Let's start it up. It still purrs like a kitten. I wouldn't say he got ripped off. It's still running like a clock. He abuses this thing like no tomorrow. Yes, the paint is spray on bed liner, what's left of it. A few pieces have been knocked off over the days. His son, who he bought it for originally, got mad and he cut the tailgate off so there's no tailgate anymore. Now his son's out driving big rigs now. Left his father with the truck and it's still going strong. Now recently he picked up a Cadillac used in California, drove it all the way back to Tennessee, towed it with this thing and didn't have any problems. Now the owner of this truck is a bit of a madman. It is rated at 7,200 pounds towing. One time he got his big trailer and he picked up steel plate, one inch steel plate. He had to pay for it, so he weighed the steel plate on their scale. And the plate alone was 18,000 pounds. So then you got the trailer and everything else, and he towed it away. He did say it was sitting pretty low, but it made it back and forth and nothing broke. I understand these early ones especially were overbuilt because Toyota never built full-size pickups before this. The T100 was a pre cursors but they only had v6s this has got the v8 engine in it toyota wanted to make a truck to prove to the world they could make something tough so these things are extremely overbuilt proof that it was built for 7200 pounds towing and he put probably close to 20,000 pounds he was pulling <laughs> and it didn't break down. Try it out with a GM or Ram. Watch the rear end fall off on it. The heart of these things is a V8 engine. They're solid, reliable engines. Now, since this is the older one, it only has one drawback, and that's that it's got rubber timing belts. And it is an interference engine. So, if the belt breaks when you're going 60, the piston will hit the valves and it'll destroy the engine. So, it's a good idea every 100,000 miles or so, change the timing belt, the pulleys, and the water pump. See, you don't have any problems in the future but that's minor when you consider how long these things can last and i mean really listen to it other than the occasional fan belt squeak listen to that engine does it clap no when we wrap it up does it have rods knocking no now this is an early one so it was built in indiana later they started making them in san antonio and they still had very good quality but these ones that were built by hoosiers in indiana if you can find one and it's running like this snap it up now when they say they don't make them like they used to to some extent that is true one the prices are two to three times as much for a new one price one of these things new with the solid frame that these things have they can basically last forever if you want to maintain them this is not not some wimpy unibody construction. This has a gigantic frame on it. And as you see, it's pretty workable. Everything on these is a lot of space. Very simple, leaf suspension. Simple stuff that's easy to fix and can last forever. Now another proof of the virtual indestructibility of these Tundras is, try finding one in a junkyard. That's the one downside is it's hard to find used parts for them because people get them, they fix them. And if somebody sells one to a junkyard, odds are those junkyard dudes are gonna fix it and sell it and make a good profit. That's how solid made they are. This is the all wheel drive version. One of the reasons that he had to pay 14 grand for it, even though it had 160,000 miles on it. You're not gonna get stranded with one of these things. A lot of guys are totally happy with just a real wheel drive as a regular everyday pickup truck. Now to prove the indestructibility, the day he bought it for his son, they wanted off-roading serious off-roading and he decided he wanted pictures of the truck flying over him so they found some hills and this thing was flying six feet up in the air and he's under it taking pictures of 
the truck they just bought. I told you he was crazy. Here he is. Now, is this man crazy or what? <laughs> it's still working on the original automatic transmission. And yeah, he had to change the radiator. They are plastic radiators. And he had to change the ignition coils too. Oh, and it's such a complicated job. Here they are. <laughs> One bolt, snap them off. We're talking about simplicity. For a V8 engine, as you can see, this thing has a lot of working room. You compare a modern Ford V8, some of those, you can only see the two front cylinders, the rest of them are way under the firewall. No working room. This thing has tons of working room. And if you don't like the power that it has, you want a lot more than close to 300, you can do whatever you want. You want to turbocharge it, you want to supercharge it. These engines are overbuilt. They can take it. And sure, it's a Toyota. They don't break down all that much. But when they do, there's all kinds of working room. Especially one of these four-wheel drive jobs. They got so much clearance. Unless you're doing a brake job, you don't have to take the wheels off or even jack it up. You can just roll under. Yeah, you're nice and high up in the air. Hey, as old as this thing is, it still rides quite well. Now, years ago, I put new front struts on the front, but the back still got the original shocks on it. <laughs> now, it may be a big old pickup truck, and it's old as the hills, but watch what happens when you step on the gas. There go the pickets right by the side. Got a nice sound too. 326,000 miles, and we're talking about 21 years old. It still rides quite well. It's not bouncing around like a beat up old pickup truck. So if you're looking for a good work truck, don't whine about what these people want for these Toyota Tundras because they can last a long time. Time. You're going to pay a lot for them. Let's say you just want a knock around pickup truck. Go get an old F-150 or an old Ram from the 80s or 90s that you can get dirt cheap and it can be okay for pulling stuff back and forth. But if you want something that can still do serious work, you really can't beat a Tundra used. The truth about the Mazda B3000 pickup. Here's the Mazda emblem. But well, let's open the driver's door and look inside. What does it say here? Manufactured by Ford Motor Company. For Mazda Motor Company. So in other words, this Mazda B3000 is in reality a Ford Ranger pickup truck. Check under the hood. It's only put one of these dumb cold air intakes on it, but it goes to a V6 engine, which is a Ford Vulcan V6 3.0 liter engine. That's why it's called the B3000. It's a three liter engine. Now it's a very conventional engine. It's V6, it's got cast iron block, cast iron head, push rods, and two valves per cylinder. Puts out 140 horsepower, which is enough to move this little pickup truck around. Especially since it's got a standard transmission behind the eight ball here. Now it's a pretty basic pickup truck. Got a decent bed on it. You can haul a reasonable amount of stuff with it. This one has a decent spray-on liner. So, even though it's getting older, it's solid. You can see the bolts are rusty, but the bed's still in good shape. Now, Ford and Mazda have been collaborating for decades. Some like these, the B3000. It's a Ford Ranger with the Ford engine, a Ford transmission. They just had deals going back and forth. Now, basically being a Ford Ranger, this was manufactured in the United States. If you were buying this and thinking you were getting a Japanese vehicle, no you aren't. You're getting a Ford Ranger. And they can be decent trucks like this one that's served its owners well. It's 17 years old, has 198,000 miles on it. And truth be told on this one, the differential here is starting to wear out. It's starting to growl, which is typical when they get that kind of mileage on them. And the owner's probably going to just drive it until it drops. It might still go quite some time before it finally goes out. Now you could have a full differential rebuild done, which might run you anywhere between eight and nine hundred dollars if you want to fix it. Or if you're more of a gambling man or have luck in junkyards, I had a customer a couple of years ago buy a used rear end, the whole thing, for 250 bucks from a junkyard and the truck he came out of, he said it had 15,000 miles was smashed in and it worked perfectly fine. Even though it says Mazda, it's a Ford product, so getting parts, there's a lot of them out there and you got a lot of choices of what you can do. Now as a used vehicle, these things can be decent. You can get them cheap enough and they can last a while. But when they were brand new, really, they weren't that much of a deal. To give you an example, 
the list price of this vehicle was $16,500 when it was new. And at that same time, 2003, you could have picked up a comparable Toyota Tacoma for about $800 less. And yes, the Toyota Tacoma is a much better overall truck in terms of longevity, needing less repairs, a little bit higher technology. But just try finding a good used Toyota Tacoma cheap. That's not an easy thing to do. If you only have a few grand to spend, getting one of these used might be a better idea because you can find them. It's going to cost a lot less than a comparable Tacoma. After all, these are pretty basic vehicles. V6, cast iron block, cast iron head, push rod, simple technology, and they're not bad vehicles. And if you can get one for a cheap enough price used, it can be a great secondary truck for running around with. After all, a small pickup truck is a small pickup truck. They all look the same. They look like small pickup trucks. <laughs> and you can see, 17 years later, body's still in excellent shape. Even the fancy rims that it originally came with are still looking pretty good. For all that age, now of course having a V6 engine, even though it's a standard transmission, these aren't gas misers. This particular one gets about 17 in the city and 21 on a highway. You don't get great gas miser pickup trucks, especially when they're a little bit older. But that's not what you buy pickup trucks for. You buy them to haul stuff. It's got a decent sized bed with a standard transmission. It's pretty easy to haul reasonably heavy loads. And with that V6 engine and a standard transmission, it can tow 4,000 pounds, so it's got towing capability. All in all, it's a decent little pickup truck, especially if you find a good one used at a decent price. Just realize it's not a Mazda. It's a Ford. It's made by Ford in the United States. So if you were looking at one of these Mazdas and a Ford Ranger pickup truck, realize it's the same thing. <laughs> you could buy either one, you'd be getting the same vehicle. Now my son bought this Toyota Tacoma for about 25 grand brand new because he wanted a solid reliable vehicle. This has the four cylinder engine in it, automatic transmission. He looked at the more expensive V6 with all the luxury items on him, but he didn't want to spend all that money. Well, behind me is another Toyota Tacoma but it's the more luxurious one. As we look under the hood, it's got the bigger V6 engine and it's got four doors. A soldier bought it used, plenty of room for his friends, and all their gear under the nice turn out top that it's got, and he paid $12,000 for it. Now as you can see, it's got a little over 110,000 miles on it, but it's a Toyota. They can run forever, and it's also just rear wheel drive, which I advise people, if you don't need four wheel drive, don't pay the extra money, you get worse gas mods, more things to break down. It still has a really good towing capacity. Being the V6 engine, this is the V6 pre-runner SR5. But in my son's base model with a four cylinder, he didn't have any interest in towing anything. He doesn't want to tow, he didn't even care about towing. He's using it as a work truck. As you can see by looking inside. All kinds of tools in here fixing houses now yes toyotas do have high resale value on their trucks but when you consider the price differential between the base model and the higher level twelve thousand dollars for this used is actually a good deal and getting it used like this the depreciation has depreciated why buy a new one for 30 something and then eat the depreciation yourself let someone else do that you find a nice clean truck like this hey don't whine over a few thousand dollars here or there, believe me. Now I'm gonna check it out to make sure he got a good deal. He was complaining that this maintenance required light is flashing on and off, but that's a no big deal. They're just set to come on every so many thousands of miles. All we have to do is this. There's various strategies for turning them off. What you do is you turn the key on, and the first thing we'll set it to is trip A. So it's on trip A, then we turn the key off. Then, with our fingers on the button, we'll turn the key on. As we can see, it's resetting it. When we restart the car, 
We don't see the maintenance flashing anymore. That reset it. Many cars are made this way, so don't freak out. Now I'm gonna analyze the whole thing for him. Hook up the scan tool. We turn the key off, and we're off to the races. Turn the machine on. Here we go. We'll do a little diagnosis here. There we go. It's getting the VIN number. Kind of like a slot machine here. We'll do a health report. See what shape it's in. Scanning everything. Now that's coach for the engine, the airbag, and the tire pressure monitor. So let's look at the engine first. Startability malfunction, P1604. I see this all the time in people's vehicles they buy used. Sometimes they sit on lots of while, the battery's a bit weak. They get that code, means nothing. Check the airbag code. Passenger seat airbag mode indicator. Another code that most people don't care about. Somebody might have left something sitting there without the seat belt on. All kinds of things can trip that. They really don't mean much of anything. Code is tire pressure monitor. Cannot receive data from the transmitter main. Another problem that I see occasionally. Now, if you notice on the dash, there's no lights for tire pressure monitor system problem so it's another glitch that means practically nothing so we're just gonna clear all the trouble codes and let the soldier drive it around see if any of it comes back as you can see it's turning them all off and now they're all off and they're all green so what's next we'll look at the live data we just go to system selection all systems engine and away we go and as you can see including the history there's no codes those codes were all codes that don't really mean much of anything they weren't obd2 codes where you can't get your car inspected they're just kind of squirrely glitchy things so we're going to look through everything else now this particular one going a little bit lean it's adding some fuel you can see they're all adding tiny amounts so the only advice i have on this is Eh, probably watch my video, how to clean fuel injectors without removal, and have them pressure clean. They're probably a little bit dirty, and they're not spraying just perfectly. We're still in the A's for data. Uh, just going through them all, see if anything is a bit odd or not. Right, all cylinders, there's no misfires at all. You really know it's not misfiring, but you can see all the one through six, they're all zero. There's no misfiring at all. We have sensors stable and the right data. See, the total fuel trim for number one bank is almost perfect. Number two, it's a little bit off, showing that it'd be a good idea to clean the fuel injectors on this thing. So all in all, it is an excellent truck. Now this Ford was cheap, it was $3,500, but is it good? Well, I'm going to show you. This is a 2001 F-250 that the customer just bought for 3,500 bucks. Got all the parts. It's even got one of these fancy lift gates on the back. Let's check it out. Well, look at the cavern front seat. Well, it shows it was well used. <laughs> you can always reupholster these or put padding in if you want. You know, this is a classic pickup truck with a split bench seat. It was made in the USA. This particular one's got 159,598 miles on it, and as you can see, it starts right up. And the AC still blows nice and cold. And as old as it is, it's still got some cruise control stuff and buttons on the steering column, dependable automatic transmission with overdrive and as you can see under here it's two-wheel drive the front wheels are just for spinning it's not four-wheel drive if you don't need four-wheel drive take scotty's advice don't buy all-wheel drive much more dependable with just rear-wheel drive especially these fords as they age the front wheel drive get clunky as you turn and things wear it's a good solid front end when it's only rear-wheel drive much simpler to maintain and a little bit better gas mileage now if you check under the hood you can see it's got a venerable V8. Now this particular one is a 5.4 liter. Just look at the intake. Puts out 250 horsepower and aside from some of them having problems with the spark plugs popping out of the holes, which Ford fixed, they got better spark plugs for them now. It's not something you have to worry about anymore. They're extremely reliable engines. This one still sounds good. Nice and solid, no clacking. The only thing you really hear is the fan clutch. Air. Now this V8 engine is tied in with a four-speed automatic with overdrive, which is a very dependable unit. Now of course it's always the transmission that wears out first on these things, but my customers who kept them forever, four or five hundred thousand miles or more, a lot of times they would just go and put a Ford factory remanufactured automatic transmission in. When they broke, a lot of times they'll go 250,000 miles and when they break, you just put a factory remand in and you can get a lot more miles out of them. They are fixable and they can last a long time. And the way it's set up, this can tow up to 12,500 pounds. You need something to tow with, what you want is a V8 engine. Big heavy body, 
something that's not going to flex. These things are made for towing. A lot of guys put goosenecks in the back to tow big stuff. Well, this one's just set up with a single rear wheels. You can get dually rear wheels, but really, this is a bargain truck. You pay 3,500 bucks. You're better off with the singles. You put duallys, you start pulling too much with an old vehicle, things are gonna wear out faster. Let's face reality. Most people don't want to. Old Scotty doesn't want to sometimes, but when it comes to vehicles, Face reality. Brand new one of these started at like $34,000 up. This guy paid $3,500 for this. Don't expect you're gonna buy something like this and then start using it as a work truck, carrying 12,500 pounds, filling the bed with rocks and stuff. You can do stuff, but it's not something that you're gonna put 20,000 miles a year on and do heavy, heavy duty work. It's a nice, cheap work truck. Now this does have the check engine light on, so we're gonna scan it, and we're also gonna see what kind of shape everything's in by analyzing the data. So we'll plug in the data port right here. Simple to do, and read the data. You can't hide from a machine. And I noticed while it's sitting there idling, it's got a little bit of a misfire, a little shaking at idle, so there's gonna be something wrong. But, might not be anything big. Now the main thing is it has power train control codes. So we're gonna check those codes. Read codes. Check all system isn't complete. That we don't care about. P1117, the engine coolant temperature circuit is a fault. So it probably needs a new engine coolant temperature sensor, maybe some wiring. And the cylinder head temperature sensor has a high input. So that's probably bad too. We'll do some more tests. Ford has automated tests. They always have. So now it's doing some tests to see if there's anything else going on. Well, there's nothing outrageous. And as we check the electrical system codes, we can see there's a bunch of higgly piggly ones. Parking lamp switch failure, driver safety belt switch, brake circuit failure, opener shorter to ground, accessory delay relay circuit failure, bunch of minor electrical stuff. You fix what you need to fix. Let's say the brake lights don't work. Then you fix the brake lights off and the switch goes bad or the wiring. Pretty simple fix. It's not stuff you gotta spend a lot of time on. Truck like this, you want it to have brake lights, headlights, turn signals. As long as it passes a safety inspection, who cares about the rest? It's an old truck you paid $3,500 for. More important is the live data, which I'm gonna check now to see what kind of shape the vehicle is in. See, there's all kinds of data. The interesting thing is there's no misfire currently detected. It's a little bit off, but it's not bad enough to trip the codes. These old trucks, they're never gonna run perfect, but they can run good enough. Seeing all these no faults, showing that those systems are working. Now, as you can see, the fuel trim, presently this bank Number one is minus 5.46, and number two, it's adding a little bit of fuel, but then every once in a while it starts to subtract. Even the other one, you can see, now it's adding and now it's subtracting, now it's subtracting, but, you know, it's a maximum of five something percent. You're going to see that in any old vehicle. Computers are compensating for wear. Maybe the fuel injectors aren't spraying enough gas, or sometimes too much. It's always going to be going back and forth because it's an old vehicle and it's trying to make it run as good as it can. The important part, this is all the transmission data. I'm looking for bad stuff there. Certainly not a perfect vehicle, but good enough. Let's take it for a road test. That doesn't idle all that bad. A little bit of a shake, but hey. And? Sounds like a big truck. No particularly horrible noises. And for a Ford, the power steering isn't groaning much. A little bit of a uh -uh, but that's it. I'll always grind a little bit in the Ford, but this one hardly at all. Now it's old and heavy. Let's see how it takes off. We'll floor it. And it shakes and rattles. Doesn't have all of its horses anymore. But you can see it still shifts pretty good. It's not jerking. It's not a race truck, but it can still go and still haul stuff. Well, it rides like a truck. <laughs> it's a Ford F 250. It bounces over the bumps, you know. <laughs> but it feels solid enough. Yeah, it bounces around. It's got old shocks on it. But it's still a reliable, dependable truck for 3,500 bucks. And being a big Ford truck, still has decent brakes. Brakes on these things are always solid. Now really, it has no extremely odd noises. The bushing sound okay. Power steering pump just makes a little uh, when you turn it every once in a while. Not in bad shape for an old truck that was only 3,500 bucks. And really, this power lift gate on the back, what a bonus. And as we look under the truck and look, at the size of that rear end differential. This was a solid made truck to last a long time. And what do you see dripping under the truck? Nothing, it's not even leaking anything. It's a miracle, it still has a complete exhaust system on it. 
That's nice and quiet. As the saying goes, don't look a gift horse in the mouth. Don't look this $3,500 truck in the mouth either. It's a pretty good deal for $3,500. Aside from this ding in the back, the rest of the truck is solid and great shape. Still looks decent. Look at those massive tow hooks on the front. And even this massive dent on the front bumper has something to say. What does it say? It says, I can dish it out and I can take it and still go down the road. Solid. This isn't some cheap, crumply plastic piece of junk. It's solid metal and it may be dented, but it's still there. Which pretty much sums up this whole truck. Solid. And it's still there. Yeah, it isn't brand new. It isn't perfect. But hey, for 3500 bucks, it is one sweet work truck. Why a 97 Silverado is so much better than the modern ones that they're building. Now back in the day, 1997, they built these things to last. Check this out. The guy paid seven grand for it a couple of years ago. The only thing he's done to it is put a fuel pump and a power steering pump on it. And even though, as you can see, it's got 183,000 miles on it, listen to this. Starts right up, sounds like a dream. No misfires. Smooth engine, not shaking. Now the owner admits it burns oil. If he changes the oil after 5,000 miles, in between he has to add about half a quart of oil. No biggie. I've seen new ones that in that period of time would go through five or six quarts of oil and GM would say, oh, well, that's normal on these engines. Seriously, they don't make them like they used to. The modern ones, I see the transmissions going out early. This one's still got the original transmission. It's just like a dream. Got a full size bed, and he's going to be putting these rally wheels on later. And the advantage of these older ones, like this 97, is you can do a lot of modifications yourself. You don't need to have a bunch of computers to modify stuff. You can still play around with these things. And being a 1500, there are parts all over the place. You can trade for them, you can buy them on eBay. There's all kinds of parts available for these things relatively cheaply, so you can play to your heart's content without spending a small fortune brand new 2021 Silverado. They start for about $34,900. Paid seven for this two years ago and it's still running fine. Even if the engine and transmission went out and he had to spend a few thousands fixing them, it's worth it. These things are solid. If they don't rust out, they can last forever. And let's check the undercarriage out. Here we have the frame. Solid as can be. You're always gonna see superficial rust. That means nothing. This frame is solid as can be. You can see it's a real truck. It's got a solid frame, and then the bed is bolted onto the frame. This is not some unibody pile of junk. And another reason these are great, they got strong differentials in the back to drive the rear wheels. This is a rear wheel drive pickup truck. The differential in this truck was made in the United States. And if you know anything about late model Silverados, their rear ends go out all the time. And it took this genius and Florida to figure out why where he studied the rear ends and found out that they were made in Mexico and they were not building them correctly so the way they were building them they were not tightening them up tight enough the internal bearings would have the equivalent slack of a rear end that had 80 or 90 thousand miles this is fresh out of the factory and then I had customers have 50 60 thousand miles on their new Silverados the rear ends went out started howling because they were not made correctly in Mexico this baby was made in the United States it's still working fine now look Looks fine, it's solid. Let's check the electronics out because that never lies. So I'll hook the old scan tool up, turn it on. And here we go, it's an old car, so it's gonna take a while to get all this data out. The new ones are a lot faster, but it still gets a lot of information. Now in this case, there's three codes, so let's check them out. The catalyst efficiency is low, bank one and bank two. And there's a little bit of a misfire, which doesn't surprise me at all because has the exhaust been modified, as you can hear. And you can hear a little bit of pops here and there. When you modify the exhaust and have it free flow like that, it's often gonna mess with the catalytic converter data. And every once in a while, you're gonna get a pop. Well, that pop is a misfire. What's well, a good thing this thing is in Tennessee. You don't really have to worry about all the pollution control stuff because they don't check for it anymore. Unless you live around Nashville. Now we're gonna look at the live data. And we wanna look at the computer system. Well, we got all kinds of information to look at. We'll start looking through it. Your fuel ratio is 14.7 to one. This has 183,000 
thousand miles on it. You know what perfect air fuel ratio is? Fourteen point seven to one. So it's still running perfectly. <laughs> you can see the injector average on bank two is three millisecond, and on bank one it's three millisecond. That means that the engine is perfectly balanced. If one was off from the other, there's a problem. The engine would roll because one side would be firing different than the other. But these are exactly the same, which is what you want. Now, as we look at the misfire current, you can see there's okay. They just went to two count. The others are all zero. So the number four cylinders having a very minor misfire. Like I say, that's generally because the exhaust system, you're gonna get a little popping here and there. You see when we rub it up, the count goes back to zero. That proves my point. When you're going fast, it doesn't care. But at an idle, with the exhaust being taken off like this and loud, it's got a little bit of a ding. Well, when you rub it up, it doesn't misfire. So who cares? <laughs> Transmission dead. Here's the two to three shift. What do we have here? Two to three shift error, 0.44 seconds. That isn't much. With this kind of mileage, so what if it takes a little bit less than half of a second for it to shift from second to third gear? We're not in that big of a hurry, are we? Three to four shift time is instantaneous. It's zero, which doesn't surprise me at all. I often see these in these. Three to four, there's less power going. First to second and second to third is when guys are really gunning it to take off. So those are the gears that'll wear more than the higher gears, and this just proves the three to four shift. It doesn't take any time at all to shift because that's the one that has less wear. But all in all, hey, it runs pretty good. We'll take it for a road test. Here we go around the neighborhood. You're up nice and high, still rides pretty good. And here we go, you can feel it. We're shifting. Pretty smooth shift if you ask me. I'm not whining about it. The computer might say it's off point four four of a second, but feels pretty good to me. Now we're getting out on the country road here. See what this old truck can do. Still has got good acceleration. Let's listen to the tranny. I don't call that a rough shift at all myself. She's pretty smooth to me. So now you know the truth about why these old Silverados are a heck of a lot better than the ones they've been building for the last eight or ten years. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.